So, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Brian Skeljak. I'm a senior developer technologies engineer in NVIDIA, and today I will be talking about VRWorks graphics features and various ways you can use them to accelerate your Unity applications on NVIDIA hardware. So um, let's go ahead and uh, do a quick review of our, of our talk. So first we will, do, we will talk, uh, we will review the VR rendering challenges and then we'll focus on the VRWorks features like multi-resolution shading, lens match shading, single pass stereo and VR SLI and see how can they help address them. After that, we will discuss VRWorks integrations into Unity projects, followed by our special announcement of the Ansel plugin for Unity. We are very excited about that. And uh, at the end, we are saving the best for the end. We're going to have a live demo. Uh, we will going to demo multi-resolution shading and Ansel in desktop title distance. So, um, so let's start and talk a bit about various challenges uh, we are facing when rendering VR. VR scenes. So VR rendering is quite different from the standard rendering. Since we need to keep very high frame rates, 90 frames a second or above, we have to make sure the latency is really low and therefore we need to process and prepare our scene as efficiently as possible. So unlike standard rendering in virtual reality, obviously we need to produce two images, you know, one for left and one for the right eye. So this represents a challenge both on the CPU side, where we want to avoid culling the scene twice, but also on the GPU side, we also want to avoid rendering all the geometry twice. So one additional difference from standard rendering when it comes to VR is that the final eye image needs to be distorted to actually match the lenses on the head mount and display. Now, if you have a look at the bottom right image there, um, you'll notice that the original rendered image is much larger than the actual distorted view that gets projected on the lenses. In fact, on the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, the actual recommended render, render image size is actually almost double the amount of pixels that you actually need to actually present the image on the lenses. So, to actually highlight this problem, I've actually marked all these pixels in red. So everything that you see there in red, all those pixels get wasted in the whole process of projecting your final image to the lenses. So this is clearly shows the, how regular VR rendering can be very inefficient. <clears throat> so we have identified um, two key challenges when it comes to VR rendering. So the two questions is how do we render both eyes in a single pass? And the second one is how do we reduce pixel waste caused by the lens distortion? So let's have a look how the VR can help us there. So we will start with the multi-resolution shading, which allows us to better approximate pixel density, which we need to match the lenses. Therefore, it's actually helping us reduce the pixel waste while rendering VR scenes. So let's... Uh, have a closer look at the multi-resolution. So as we already mentioned, right, when rendering VR scenes, we need to distort our view and to match the lenses on the head mount display. So the trouble is the GPUs are not designed to do this, right? They are only designed to uh, render linear projections, right? So the, the rasterization hardware is designed around the assumption of the linear perspective projections. So the current VR software actually solves this problem in the post-processing where they actually distort the image they do resampling to actually match the lenses. So what you see on the right there is the actual image that gets a bit projected on the lens. Now, if you look what happens in this scenario uh, during the distortion pass, you'll find that the, while the center of the image stays more or less the same, the outskirts of the image, they get squashed quite a bit. So if you look at the green circles up there on the, on the slide, uh, they are the same size and they enclose almost the same region of the image in both uh, original and distorted image, right? Then if you compare that to the actual red rectangle, you will notice that it actually gets quite squashed in the distorted image. So what this means is that we are overshading the outskirts of the image, we are rendering and, and shading way too many pixels, they never get, uh, they never make it out of display, right? So this is just uh, wasted pixels, and this is significant inefficiency, and it just slows you down. So that brings us to multi-resolution shading. 
So the idea is very simple. We subdivide the image into a set of adjoining viewports. In this case, we have nine viewports, so it's a three by three grid. Uh, we keep the center viewport at the same size, so the pixel density in the center viewport is 100%, but we scale down all the ones around. So all the left, right, top, bottom uh, viewports, they all, they all get scaled down. And this is basically, a fish, if, uh, effectively, we are reducing the resolution of the outskirts of the image while maintaining full resolution at the center. So if you notice all the black area there on the image on the right, basically that represents all the pixels that no longer need to be rendered. So there's a significant saving. So because this is still just a standard rendering, right, the GPUs can produce um, and process uh, geometry in multiple viewports without any problems. Now the key difference that we are now better approximating the pixel density of the distorted image that we eventually, eventually want to generate, right? So since we are closer to the pixel density that we actually need, we're gonna end up wasting uh, less pixels. And we can do that uh, to get a substantial performance boost and for really no perceptual uh, reduction in image uh, or perceptible reduction in image quality. Now, depending on how aggressive you wanna be, obviously these viewports are customizable. So uh, you can save anywhere from 20 to, to 50% pixels when rendering it using multi-resolution. Now, you might be wondering how can we render all this geometry into nine different viewports, right? So the, the key thing here is what makes this technique a performance win is the, is the hardware feature we have on NVIDIA's Maxwell and Beyond architectures. So replicating all the scene geometry to several viewports uh, would be very expensive, right? There are various ways that can be done with instancing, resubmitting draw calls, geometry shader expansion and so forth, but all these methods normally add too much extra work that basically they eat up any gains you get from reducing the pixel count. So what we have in our hardware with Maxwell, starting from Maxwell, we have the ability to very efficiently uh, broadcast the geometry to many, view, to many viewports of arbitrary shapes and sizes, so we are, but we are submitting the draw calls only once. So the GPU geometry pipeline all, runs only once, and that lets us to render into multi-resolution render target in a single pass, just as efficiently as we would do in a, in a single, single viewport. Now, but the great thing about multi-resolution is that it also works quite well with non-standard, uh, with the standard, sorry, non-VR uh, rendering. Now, if you think about it, uh, in most of the games, like first-person shooters or racing games, the players are really paying closer attention to the center of a the screen. They don't really uh, pay much attention most of the time to the, to the edges, right? So this is why we could actually use multi-resolution in the desktop titles and actually reduce the amount of pixels that we need to render on the outskirts uh, and therefore increase the performance, right? So to showcase this, we integrated multi-resolution shading into desktop title distance and you can see some of the performance results. So at the bottom you will see that we used uh, two different configurations for the multi-resolution, so conservative and aggressive. So with a conservative setup, we are basically reducing the amount of pixels that we need to process by like 28%, and with the aggressive one, we are getting even to 42%. And the overall performance increase is, goes between 20 to 54% percent, which is quite significant. Now, obviously, due to the nature of this feature, it works best when you are pixel bound, right? If you are CPU bound, or if you are geometry bound, it's not really going to help much. But it actually allows you to add extra post-processing effect, post effects and uh, more complex uh, pixel shaders. So uh, let's move on to the our next feature. So next topic is Lens match shading. Now, lens match shading is, is somewhat similar to multi-resolution shading since it also allows us to reduce the pixel waste and rendering uh, virtual reality scenes. But unlike multi-resolution shading, this feature is only for VR and it's available only on Pascal uh, GPU architecture and beyond. So lens match shading is using Pascal's simultaneous multi-projection capability um, to render directly to a surface that's more closely approximating the final lens corrected display. You can see that's what you, those four little viewports you see there on the, 
on the screen, you can see how they are bent in a way they match the lens better. So by doing this on, on Pascal GPU, we can improve performance dramatically because we don't have to process all the extra pixels that get thrown away anyway in, in a post-process pass when we are matching the, uh, matching the lenses on HMD. Uh, so lens match shading is, is a more optimal way for VR scenes to achieve very similar results what we've seen with uh, multi-resolution. So you can have to have a look at this from a 2D perspective. Those four viewports you just saw in the previous slide, when they get projected in 2D, this is the shape that you get. And as you can see, all those black uh, black area around the LMS image is basically the pixels that we don't we are no longer render, and we are, we get the shape that's much closely matching the lens. And we also the pixel density is better distributed going from the center towards the edges. So this is a perfect technique um, for virtual reality. So this brings us to single pass stereo. So at the beginning of our talk, we, we identified two key rendering problems, right? The, so the multi-resolution shading and lens match shading, they actually provide substantial performance improvements for pixel shading. And they, uh, they help reduce the, the pixel waste when performing the lens match or lens warp. But um, single pass stereo is another feature that can actually save us geometry performance. So this is because it allows us to render a VR scene in a single pass. Now, let's have a look how that works. So uh, virtual reality, obviously, we, we require, um, we have to render the scene twice, right? We have to produce image for the left and for the right eye. So traditional stereo rendering does this in two passes. First pass for left eye, second pass for the right eye. So obviously, this is not the ideal um, solution. So this is something we want to avoid, and this is where the single pass stereo actually steps in. So single pass stereo is a new feature. It's using Pascal simultaneous multi-projection as well, a capability to render left and right eye in a single pass. Uh, this saves us the entire geometry pass, so we officially, basically effectively we are doubling the amount of geometry we can process when you're rendering a VR scene. Now, single pass stereo helps us reduce the geometry load while the lens match shading helps us reduce the pixel load so that when you combine them together, you get a, a very good way of uh, accelerating your VR scenes. Now, it, it's worth mentioning that in, in some of the engines uh, using instance stereo uh, rendering where they're basically, this only saves the CPU cycles because it's only um, issuing a single draw call, but the GPU still has to process geometry twice. So there's a difference between single pass stereo and that approach because single pass stereo is hardware accelerated and provides major GPU performance increase. So now that we've learned uh, how the single pass stereo works, let's have a look, quick look at the uh, VR SLI. So VR SLI is another feature which helps us reduce the GPU load by simply uh, splitting the workload, be workload between multiple GPUs. So yeah, the idea is very simple, you know, two eyes, two GPUs, right? So this, the stereo views are independent of each other, so it's intuitively obvious that um, you can parallelize the rendering of them across the GPUs to make a massive improvement in performance. So, so in other words, you render one eye on each GPU and combine images together at the end. So this um, reduces the amount of work you need to do on a GPU, so it allows you to either include, increase the graphic settings or, well, but uh, still maintain 90 frames a second, which is required uh, by the HMDs, and also doesn't hurt latency at all. Now, let me first explain how the normal SLI works. I mean, for years, most of you already know, for years we had uh, the, the normal SLI, alternate uh, frame SLI, so where GPUs trade off frames, right? In this case, the two GPUs, one renders the, the even frames, the other one renders the odd frames, and the GPU start frames are staggered half a frame apart to try to maintain regular frame delivery to the display. So this works well to increase frame rate compared to the single GPU, but it really doesn't help much with latency, and latency is critical in VR. So this kind of system with the SLI doesn't really help us much in VR. So this is um, a better way to use two GPUs is to split the work of drawing a single frame across them. So namely, we are rendering each eye on each GPU. 
Now, this has the nice property that it improves both frame rate and latency relative to single GPU system. And the best thing about it, that this is all done automatically, so the, the VRWorks plugin in Unity will detect SLI and, and distribute the workload between GPUs automatically. You really don't have to do anything if a user is actually running on SLI configuration. So now that we've seen how the VRWorks features work, let's have a closer look at um, integration in Unity. So VRWorks is coming as a native plugin. Um, it supports multi-resolution shading, single-pass stereo, lens match shading, and VR SLI. So far, it's only it's DirectX 11 only, so it's a PC obviously only build. Uh, supports basic post-processing, forward rendering. Uh, one thing to mention is because VRWorks features are using a special fast geometry shader pipeline, um, uh, your games really shouldn't be using geometry shaders, which is not probably a big deal in Unity because most of the materials don't use geometry shaders. It's, but for the image effects, that's okay. So we actually s integrated VRWorks in Unity version 5.4.1 F1. Uh, you need to be a licensed uh, Unity developer to get access, and you can register at the link shown there on the slide. So here's some main points regarding the integration. So, you know, this is a native plugin, so it comes with two DLLs, 32-bit and 64-bit, which needs to be placed under assets slash plugins folder. Uh, also, we have a C-sharp script, which controls all the features that needs to go under asset script. So pretty standard stuff. And you can see from the code snippet there, um, accessing the features, enabling the assembly, it's really trivial. All you have to do is call is feature available, and if it is, then set, set active feature. In this case, it's a single pass stereo. And then when you no longer need the, the feature, you can just call set active feature to none. And this can be called from anywhere in your script. There's no special initialization needed or anything. It's really simple. Now, so there is a but, yeah. So the VRWorks Unity integration is quite simple and straightforward, but when it comes to image effects, it's a little bit more complicated, right? So, as we already mentioned, the uh, multi-resolution shading and lens match shading, they render images with different density. Uh, so that's effectively producing images with a lower resolution. So in some cases, for the image effects, the UV remapping uh, might be needed. And also, it's worth mentioning that certain artifacts can occur because, because of these pixel density differences, especially for the image effects, which are actually heavily dependent on the depth buffers. But we have converted the screen space ambient occlusion and depth of field. They're already converted to, to work with MRS LMS, and there's more to come. Um, all the necessary APIs in VRWorks.cg Inc. And of course, if you have your own custom image effects or anything that you need uh, converted to work with VRWorks, just let us know. We're here to help. So now I'm just going to show you quickly an example from the screen space ambient occlusion. So this is a snippet from a standard SSAO shader, uh, Unity shader. And you can see we are, we are in, in the blur pass, we're just sampling a camera depth normal texture, right? So to make this work with the VRWorks, it's a very simple change. We just have to include the VRWorks.cg Inc. And instead of directly using a camera depth normal sampler, we just use the VRWorks API, which ensures that in every single configuration, this actually image effect renders correctly. So it's, it's not that bad. So that concludes our Unity integration talk, and we have a special announcement. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ansel is a revolutionary new way to capture in-game shot and 360-degree views. It allows you to co compose, screen uh, compose screenshots from any positions, adjust them, post-processing filters, capture HDR images, and view all this in 360 degrees uh, view. So it's, it's a really cool uh, little tool. Um, so Ansel, as well, is, is a Unity plugin. It's a standard Unity plugin. It's coming soon to the Asset Store. And here you can see some of the features it has. So it's a free camera. You can freeze the game wherever you want change the field of view, position camera however you want, apply different filters, super res, right? You can capture up to, I think, 32 times the size of your standard rendering 
Um, so, so it's really cool for capturing uh, high-res images for wallpapers. And of course, you can capture 360 views in both mono and stereo. And we also support the EXR format for advanced users. Then you can later on edit your images, and there'll be Photoshop and professional tools. So that basically concludes this section. And now it's the fun time, yeah? So we're going to have a demo. Uh, let's just start this quickly. So this is the game called Distance. So our, our friends from Refract, oh, let's just, I need to process this on a different screen. I think we're gonna need to do this. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And then we need That's good. So this is the desktop title distance. Um, as I mentioned before, the multi-resolution shading is actually not just useful for the VR. It actually can be useful in, the, in a desktop title. So here, you can see we have a you know not that complicated scene, but we have a lot of post-processing going on. So there's a depth of field, a screen space, ambient occlusion. Global fog, some special noise. You know, we also have real-time reflection, so it's, it looks it looks quite nice. And you can see this is rendering at 1080p using GTX 1060, and the frame rate is, I believe, 120 something over there. So if we, I'm just going to hide the UI and I'm just going to toggle the multi-resolution. So I just enabled the conservative mode in multi-resolution. You can see the frame rate shift there to 150, if I see it correctly from here. So just to demonstrate what's happening here, this is basically what Unity is rendering now. All these pixels you see around, that are basically in purple, they are not rendered. And if we go to aggressive mode, now we can even shrink the resolution we are rendering in further. And this is basically, you can look at your frame rate, it's gone up to 180 frames a second. Now, this way you can actually really increase the performance without really hurting the visuals much. So we can also, to visualize this, if you remember what we discussed about the viewports, so these are the viewports that we use, and this is the, these are the pixel densities. So in, in the aggressive mode, you see the central viewport stays at 100%, but all the surrounding viewports now are, are at 60%. So if we change default rendering, this is the conservative mode with 70%, scaling um, on outskirts, and again, conservative. So you can see, without really hurting um, user experience much or at all, you can significantly increase performance, even in desktop titles. Now, keep in mind, in VR, this is, works even better because all these pixels that get modified on the edges, they are all peripheral vision. So you know, when you are wearing the headset, you can barely notice all these pixels that are actually, right, and at your peripheral vision, it's, uh, it's all a blur. So it's multi-resolution um, in, in VR environment. It's basically unnoticeable, almost unnoticeable. But you get the great um, performance, performance gains. And then uh, I'm just going to quickly show. Let's switch this off. Just going to quickly go to and show the Ansel. So let's try this. I'm just going to jump in there because it's a more interesting scene. You see, I just pressed Alt F2 and I was managed to freeze the game. Uh, that's just a second. Okay, let's do it again. I'll just restart it. Sorry about that. That was okay. No, it should be okay. I just use the same key for the mapping. Okay. So now you can see I framed. Uh, we we basically 
froze the game. We can move the camera however we want around. We can go and change the, the filters up here, right? We can capture super resolution 360. That's really, uh, right? The, the Ansel does all the stitching and everything for you, and then you can view the 360 with the special apps. You can view it with your HMD or we have a special app for the, for the Google Cardboard and so on, and you can share it with your friends. And with the super resolution, you can even capture up to, like I said, 32 times the size of the, of the actual rendering which we hear here, which is 1080p, and then you can use that for wallpapers and so on. So this is Ansel. Uh, it's coming soon to the, to the Unity, Unity Asset Store. Okay, so that basically concludes our talk. And if you have any questions or have any issues, uh, please email us at unitysupport at nvidia.com. Uh, if you want to get access to the bill, please register at the, at the link we, we provided. And um, hopefully enjoy the, the artworks. Thank you.